So, imagine the scene. You're sitting there in a room. You don't really leave that room much. You're sitting there in an armchair. You can barely move. You've had your lunch, but this little bit of it is dribbling down your chin. You'd like to go and see the lady next door in the next room, but she died two weeks ago. You feel very upset about that. She's the only real person you've connected with since your best mate Tom died 10 years ago of a brain hemorrhage whilst out playing golf. He shouldn't have been playing golf. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't in any good shape, but, you know, he wanted to try and enjoy life. He was someone you met at a discussion group for widowers. You went there because your wife, Julie, died a few months before and you were in a terrible, terrible place. You loved Julie. You made you terribly depressed when she left. In fact, you've been really struggling for a long time. She had cancer and in fact her whole body ended up just being a host to different cancers all over her body. It was horrible to see her waste away. It was horrible to see her fade away to die. <sighs> she didn't like the indignity of it. The way her bowels exploded on the bed. The way she wet herself. The way she couldn't hold down her food. Sometimes all you could do was hug her. She came from a troubled home just like you. Maybe that's why you got on. For years, you lived with her. You decided not to have children. Not to bring them into this world. Prior to meeting her, you went on various dates, met various women. You had some good times, but you were young and carefree. Your mum died when you were in your 20s. She left this mortal realm without saying much. She never had much of a personality. Maybe it's because she was sexually abused as a child. Your dad took the reins then. He was the only person that you were related to that was still alive. Your extended family were off somewhere else doing their own thing. You didn't know where they were. You never really mixed with them. Your dad started getting Alzheimer's. Forgot all the shit he used to do to you and your mum. Lucky him. Now only you have to remember it. But even now, as you sit in this room, your memories are fading. Maybe that's a good thing. You go back to your school days, you remember the disabled boy in the class getting bullied. You remember the sadistic teachers. You remember the futility and the pointlessness of some of the learning you did and how it all seemed to go to the lowest common denominator. You were very bored in class. You didn't want to be there. You made some good friends, but as the years went by, they became alcoholics, drug users. Some of them became successful businessmen. One of them shot himself. One of them became a womanizer. One of them ended up in jail. One of them died of cancer too. You've outlived most of them. You're still here. 
you're thinking about all this. You're trying to remember all the good times, but unfortunately you're haunted by the bad times. The human brain has plays its horrible trick on us. It seems to make us think about the bad times more than the good times. They affect us more. They cripple us more emotionally. They stop us in our tracks. We wish they didn't happen. Anyway, here you are sitting in your chair. You want to go to the toilet, but you can't stand up, so you got to wait for the care worker to come in and pick you up. Well, maybe two of them. That's how they do it nowadays. So, life. Where did it all go wrong? Does it really matter? It all started when Mama said to Dada, "Would you like to have a baby?" And Dada said, "Gee, yeah, let's do it." The chain of causation of all the suffering started with that decision.